and we are right. recording. All right. Well, hi, everybody. My name is Renee, and I'm a program specialist at Girl Scout Spirit of Nebraska. And this is the um, Sky at Night Astronomy program. And uh, as many of you know, we are starting to do twice, uh, twice a day programs online. So we are, this is our first week of trying that and we hope to keep going as long as, as long as, well, until we go back to our regularly scheduled life. But we're glad to be able to participate in this and offer to Girl Scouts what we can while you guys are at home. Um, well, thank you for coming and we hope you're healthy and you're doing okay and you're um, making good choices and helping in your community. Um, and today, this is Krista. She is, she works at the UNO Planetarium and she runs the Astronomy Club for Girl Scout Spirit of Nebraska. It's called Beyond Our World Astronomy Club. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to her and she's going to teach us about the sky. Okay. Ah, I did bring my little flat Juliet today. My daughter made that so we can participate with her today. Uh, as Renee said, my name is uh, Krista Teston. I run the planetarium here on the campus of UNO and I'm uh, partially uh, some of the exec board of the Astronomy Club for Girl Scouts. Um, I've got a PowerPoint that we're going to kind of work through as my guideline for today. Let me share it first. Just a second here. Here we go. We're going to be flipping back and forth to different applets and websites. We can see it. You can? Yep. Good, because I can't. So <laughs> I got to open it up on my, <laughs> my end, too. There you go. See? I, can you see it too? Yes, looks oh, good. Oh, good. So I'm going to focus today at for the Globe at Night program. It's a citizen scientist project. Um, so people all over the world are participating in a light pollution study of wherever you live. So our agenda today is we want to welcome everybody. A little bit about Zoom etiquette. I kind of taken over and I think I've muted all your microphones and all your cameras. Now, I don't know, Renee, is that um, the, the muting, is that a, a Girl Scout requirement for the cameras or optional? Yeah, it, there's just been a few issues uh, uh, across the country with um, videos. I'm, I don't want to get into details. But not a problem. That's, that's just a Girl Scout and, etiquette so, thing. That's well, not we're, unusual. We're it's a safety issue. Yeah, not a problem. So um, anytime as we're going through all this going virtual, uh, when you do webinars or when you're doing Zoom, diff different formats, it is a uh, proper etiquette to, uh -huh. I love it. Somebody's writing on my screen. Um, it is proper etiquette to, to mute your microphone at least. And a lot of people mute videos, especially when it gets to be a larger group. And that just saves uh, bandwidth. Um, we're going to start off with an activity of making a star wheel. Now, if you're part of the astronomy club, you probably have done one of these star wheels before. Or if you've come to the UNO Planetarium for one of the Girl Scout outreach programs, we've uh, created our star wheel then. Our topic today, we're going to focus at Globe at Night. And of course, there's an app for that. And toward the end, I want to talk about what's up in the night sky. What can you go out and see? And, and then we'll leave it as our open floor comments. So here's my list of resources specifically from your Girl Scout Astronomy Badge Program that we'll be touching on today. So I'll have them posted at the end. And of course, we're recording this and we'll have it posted. We're going to look at a little bit of, of Daisy Brownie stuff, but a lot of it is, is juniors and cadets. So I'll be uh, stopping at a lot of these websites that you see listed here and uh, focusing on globe at night. But we're also going to use some sky maps or star wheels to help us uh, run our globe at night program. 
And then as we go into the older girls, you get to see some of that reoccurring using maps. And then they do some astrophotography. And there's other options too for different citizen scientist projects that could be astronomy or several of them are astronomy related. And I'll show you that website as we go along. So um, actually before I wanna start talking about the, the Globe at Night specific program, I wanna share out a poll um, and these are just basic information things. So I'm going to share out this poll. It's basically, how old are you? Just curious on what my demographic I'm working with. So are you zero to nine, 10 to 15, 15 to 20, or are you over 20 years old? Um, so if you want to vote there, and then you can see our, our polls. Are you a Girl Scout? Yes or no? Uh, a lot of my webinars I open up to everybody. So I'm just curious on, on who's a Girl Scout, how this is getting out and about. And then um, have you heard of the Astronomy Club? And we'll talk a little bit more toward the end, I think, about the Astronomy Club and an upcoming meeting, which you can also participate in. Coming up here on one minute, I'm gonna end our poll. Looks like everybody's voted in. You guys wanna see the results? Well, I guess I can't see you guys saying anything. Um, Renee, do you wanna see the results? You muted herself. Yeah, share them. Okay, yep, yep. I'm gonna share results with everybody here so you can kind of see our results. We do have some younger audience members here. And we could have a couple of people voting multiple times if you're in a family sitting around the computer. Uh, so we have some grown ups, some high school students. It looks like everybody's a Girl Scout. Yay. And then uh, about half of you have heard about the astronomy program here with uh, Girl Scouts in the state of Nebraska. Well, that's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that poll. Let's uh, get in and let's Let's talk about, um, our slide is globe at night, but before I do that, let's do our first activity. Um, I'm going to be sharing my computer screen again. We're gonna go and work on this star wheel. And we can see it. We can see your screen. Oh, good. I need to get my window open. No, not the virus. You don't want that one. No, I don't want that one either. Oh, I know what I did. I put it on my edge. Yay, here's all my links. So the first one comes from the junior, no, the brownie, sorry, the brownie badges. And this one is actually the star wheel. So this is uh, the website, was a Girl Scout website. Or if you just Google, if you Google how to make a star wheel, you come up to the website for Sky and Telescope great website for lots of resources and they have this printable star wheel so you come up with a circular map circular wheel is part one and then you have your outer sleeve that's part two now it's really cool if you can print them off in color on cardstock but i know that's not always possible the directions are also in here and how to use it and they have a video. I think that's Renee that keeps drawing on my screen. It's not me. It's cool. It is but it's not, me. <laughs> not me. Oh, okay. Uh, so I've done that. I've printed out my star wheel and I'm going to take my background off because I can already tell my awesomely cool background is going to give me problems.
we'll make it cool background. You get to see my messy office now. Um, so I printed off my star wheel, the outer sleeve. The key here is as you're cutting out, try not to cut off this white box that makes the envelope pocket. The other hard part for this is to try to cut out the center. So if you're younger, you might need a grown up to help you cut out the center. Take your time because the faster you do this, the harder it is. You wanna be really nice and smooth and cut those edges out. So I have one here, which I've cut out. As you can see, I still have some things that uh, could use a little bit cleaning up, but you can read all my numbers around the edges. And this is where I needed to un-mirror image. Okay. There we go. Oh, no, yeah. I got to make sure you can read the star wheel part and that it's not mirrored image. Okay. The other part, a lot easier to cut out. It's a, it's a circle, and on that circle is a whole bunch of constellations, dates, months. I've got to finish cutting out my circle here. And again, take your time when you do these. I'm a little older, so I'm gonna go faster, right? Usually older people go slower. Cutting, it's a little easier if you're faster. There's my wheel. Here's my sleeve, and I didn't cut my white box out, so I can fold that under. Now I've got this cool pocket. If you print it out in white, black and white or color, you notice there's little staple marks here. You wanna staple them fairly close to the mark just to make sure you get both sheets of paper. Good thing I'm in my office, I get two staplers, really handy. One was empty. Don't wanna staple too close to the center because now you have this cool pocket for your star wheel. And how you use them around the edges, it gives you your directions if you're facing north. A lot of times for an astronomer, we wanna face south. So I always put my fingers on where I'm facing and there is directions on the website. Find what month we are. This is where everyone tells me what month we're in. Oh, I have you muted. Okay, I'm hearing, I'm listening for it. We are in March still, and it goes by five. So we're gonna go March 25th, and I'm gonna set up my date, March 25th. We have bad reflection here. I'm gonna set it up with what time? What time do we wanna go out? Well, we have to kind of go out later and later um if you're doing an evening thing so i'm gonna say march 25th at nine we can go out a little bit earlier and there's white and yellow numbers one's for standard time one's for daylight savings time so you know what we're on are we on standard time or daylight savings time top question i should have pulled that so i've got 9 p.m. and if I'm facing south, this is kind of what I get to see. So we're gonna talk a little bit about this guy right here, Orion. Oh, gotta go the other way. Ooh, ooh, there he is. There's Orion. And then rising in the east, we'll have the constellation of Leo. And I'll talk about those and show you. So this is really good to use any time of year about constellations. So that's my arts and crafts project for today. Let me show you my globe at night slides because I got some really cool pictures. Oops. Here we are looking at globe at night. The website is just like it says, Globe at Night. It's .org. It's an organization. And what it's studying is light pollution. 
So here are some pictures from outer space looking back at Earth. And you can see the cities pretty easily where the larger cities are. I find these pictures beautiful and fascinating. A lot of them will show up on picture of the day also. If you like astronomy picture of the day. Here's another one. You might have seen this one in a poster form. And they take these on a regular basis. I like showing people the Nile River. You can see around the Mediterranean, you can see a lot of people live along the oceans. And it was kind of interesting when they had uh, huge tsunamis, how the light pollution changed like in Japan, when they, when they, um, the tidal waves came in and took out, same thing with hurricanes. When hurricanes take out a lot of the city, all of a sudden you notice a change in their light pollution levels. We zoom into the United States, this is a little bit newer one. You can see roadways. It's not amazing, you can see roadways. Florida, some of the islands. Not a lot of people living up here in the middle of Canada, Northern Canada. So how do we study that from on the ground? Well, we need people like you and me and, and moms and dads and friends and family to participate in citizen scientist projects. We can't have scientists all over the world. So we, we depend on um, everybody to help gather data. So every month, about mid month for about a week long, they have data gathering. We just missed the March one. So the next official Globe at Night data gathering is next month between April 14th and the 23rd. You're looking for any clear evening in that time block. Okay, let's go and go to the website that I told you about. Well, there's the Globe at Night and the Globe at Night campaign. So it talks about the April. 5,130 data points from across the world. So you can look at, see who's contributed. Observation dates, of course. So you can write down, you can get your own information, make your own report. What does the sky look like at night? So this is kind of what you would enter if you chose to do the, the computer version, this is what you would enter. Your observation date, time. That's how you contribute. So the next campaign, they spent just a little bit of time here, the last couple of months looking at a different constellation, Taurus the Bull. Now we're gonna, or not Taurus the Bull, but uh, Orion, the Mighty Hunter. Now we're gonna look for finding Leo. So this is something you can practice as you lead into that uh, before you actually get into the campaign. So finding Leo the lion, we've made a star wheel. I'm also gonna show you where you can find a star, star map. So hiding in the grass, so it gives you a little, little bit of background here. not going to show us the video. I'll let you guys go to the website to follow, but it's really five simple steps. So first of all, you got to find your constellation and there's ways that they help you find your constellation too. You got to find your latitude and longitude. So we need to know where are you collecting this data? Are you collecting it from Omaha or Shadron or North Platte or at grandma and grandpa's farm? So finding that latitude and longitude of a, lo your location or a location where it's easily identified, the closer you are to accurate, the better. So you need to go outside more than an hour after sunset. So this is where our younger girls may have a little bit of problem because um, an hour after sunset, as we move into the summer months, we're talking right now it's about 9.30 at night. 10, 10 30 at night as we get into the summer. So you might have to talk to mom and dad about staying up late just one night to try to get some of these data points. Otherwise, 
in the winter months, it's really easy. It gets dark at 5, 5.30 at night. By 6.30 at night, you could collect your data points even before dinner. Uh, the moon should not be visible. That's one of the reasons why they pick the weeks they do. Let your eyes become used to the dark for 10 minutes. So this is where you don't want your bright computer, your cell phone, you want to set that at low levels. So you want to get your eyes adjusted to a dark. And then you're going to match your observations with one of the seven magnitude charts. Your eyes can see down to seven magnitudes. That's without any telescopes, binoculars. So our magnitude chart here, if we're looking at the constellation Orion, you can pick your, your latitudes. Omaha, most of Nebraska is right about 40, 40, 41, 39. So if you have a magnitude zero, this might be cloudy skies too, you might only see the brightest star in our night sky, Sirius. Maybe one other bright star. Magnitude one charts, you see a couple more stars. Magnitude two chart. Now, depending on where you live, some people, if you're really close to a lot of urban light, might get something like this. Others of us in the Omaha area will get a night sky that looks like this. If you're lucky, you're out on the edges, you might get a night sky that looks like this. But imagine some of us that live really rural, away from the city lights, they don't have any yard lights on, they've adjusted their eyes. Your sky looks like this. There are so many stars out there that you may not have seen before. Hello. For April, we're gonna look at the constellation Leo. So if you're in a really urban area with lots of, lots of um, light pollution, you might be able to see one star, the bright star Arcturus. Here's some others. Really dark sky, you'll see a lot of stars. That's kind of cool. The more lights you have around your house, the less you see. Um, and then earlier this year, they were really focusing on an, uh, LED light pollution. So there was actually doing some, some really nice research where they're gathering details about how LEDs are out and about more often and how that has affected light pollution. You can kind of see different constellations. We could have chosen Orion here this past week. Um, by the time April comes around, our April 14th, 23rd, Orion's really setting by the time it gets dark. So once you relearn how to find Leo, you can use it for April and May. Then you can go to my one of my fun ones, booties. Bawadis or Bahodis, but I think it looks like booties. And then, so every month you can see different constellations. By the time you do, this is Southern, Southern constellations. Um, some of those you will not be able to see. Crux, sorry guys, unless you're taking a trip to, Can to Mexico, you're not gonna see Crux, that's the Southern Cross so, and some others. Once you, you find your constellation, you look at your charts, you can report your data. You're comparing observations to thousands of other people. So here's a map of different people and what charts they matched up to. This is 2020 data. We can look back last year. A little bit more participation. Let's check, is anyone in our Omaha area participating or in the state of Nebraska? Okay, there's the state of Nebraska. We have some up here at the parks. Sand Hills are participating. That was in 2019. 2020, anyone this year? Oh, look at, we have somebody that participates. It's not too far away from where I'm living in Omaha. We can zoom in. A oh, little bit too much. They're over by Fremont. It is. So over there by Fremont, someone's been participating for this year. So we need to get out and, and join. 
a lot of Girl Scouts from across the U.S. have actually started um, joining this Globe at Night project. Uh, let me go back to the main website, show you what it's it's been observed. Oops, we're not reporting today. Come on. So here's some maps and data. You can get the full data set if you wanted. Kind of looked at that. So there's the extension for the program right here. I want to show you. So if you can speak a different language, there's different translations. Um, but there's some sky charts who's who's done it. So here's some resources. Some of our translators. There's some activity guides. This is the the fun, some of the fun stuff that we can do. There's the English. So we're gonna look at Leo. So this is more background, activity packet, something to write on. This is how you can make some multiple observations. This is the printed out version. If you'd like to print out and you can mail it in. So you can have it or you can report online. So in 2015, they had some some news about light pollution in your health, the wildlife and safety. Saving sea turtles. So even though you're doing an astronomy citizen scientist project, it does affect um, other animals and other aspects of your life. I'll find that other web page I'm going to want to go to. Okay, so here's the the background. Your introduction only had that about a hundred years. Could we walk outside and see the Milky Way galaxy? So it hasn't been that long that we've started adding a lot of light pollution, and it goes into what is the effects of of light pollution destroying or disturbing our ecosystem and our health, and then we can go into just energy. Electricity, all that electricity worldwide being consumed. So all those things are going into why we're studying light pollution. And then there's three main types. We've got glare, we've got light trespassing, and we got sky glow. And I showed you pictures of that awesomely cool earth image from, from the sky. You can also go into learning a little bit about magnitudes, how bright things are. What can your naked eye see? I said uh, you can see between zero or negative numbers and um, magnitude seven is as dark as your naked eye can see. That's down here, naked eye limit is about seven. Mythology, I got started studying astronomy because I really like the mythology. And then, of course, how to find those constellations. So they give you, this is actually coming from the app I'm going to share with you in just a little bit. They've kind of embedded it. And if you're a teacher, oh, you need to do a lesson plan. There's your standards from fourth grade through high school. And then your K-4 stuff. Oh, they've even got math standards. Imagine that. So there you go, teachers. You have educational things to also include. I'm going to 
So we're going to look at, they had that little map of how to go out and find things. That is Stellarium is what they're using. I'm going to show you, if you get parents permission, how you can use Stellarium, not just to use globe at night, but how to identify the constellations along with your star wheel. I installed Stellarium the other day on my computer. This is my new laptop. So I have it actually on all my computers. I'll show you where the website is where you can install this. So here it is right now. Omaha, that's my latitude. Hey, careful, you can see a little bit of the moon. You might see a little bit of a crescent moon shadow. The one thing we can do is we can speed up time. So on here we have constellation lines, labels. If you want to know what constellations are out right now, there we go. These are ones we'll be able to see in six hours. There's also pictures. Um, what I did first is I went and I set my location. So I went in and again, we had to find our latitude and longitude. So wherever you are, whether you're in Omaha or somewhere else, you can uh, set your longitude and latitude. You can always Google where you are. Instead of setting time, I'm just fast forwarding time right now. Sky view options. So this is where you can adjust for your light pollution once you start doing a light pollution study. I've set it for two. Um, shooting stars, you can see how they set shooting stars. But what I like for this, which I think is fun, is markings. They can do all sorts of different markings. I like to go into the star lore and look at different cultures and how they saw constellations. They've increased this list a whole lot. Um, and let's see here. I'm going to go to, I should do, I'll go into the Navajo. Well, if you go into the different ones, they can send you to different links, but they'll talk about the constellations. So we're gonna go back. I'll change it in just a little bit again. Where are we? We're currently in Western. That's your traditional. It's getting closer to sunset. Search window, if you know you wanna find a certain con uh, star, you can put your search window or object. That's configuration. You can change that a little bit. These are the ones I use most. Atmosphere. If we didn't have atmosphere, there's our atmosphere. So we can set cardinal points, our directions south. You can change your landscape or take it off. Here we go, it's starting to get darker. Oh, what are we gonna start to see outside? Oh, getting close on my time. There we go, the sun is setting, it's just getting darker. There it is, the sun, the moon. Everybody's wondering, what is that bright object in the West? That is planet Venus. Zoomed out a little, there we go. Where are we, there we go. We had a telescope. You can look at Venus changes phases. We got a half Venus visible. And zoom back out. There's 
So that's the first object you're probably going to see as it's getting darker is not a star, but planet Venus. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker. We actually want to wait till about an hour after sunset. You can always Google when sunset is, but astronomers start off in what's called celestial twilight. And you can see every once in a while I get objects floating by in my screen. Those were satellites. There, it's really dark now. Not quite south anymore, but a little bit to the southwest. The really bright star that you're first going to see is Sirius. It's a dog star. It's in a constellation called Canis Major. So if you were to play connect the dots, you could make this little stick dog. The next thing I usually see is three stars that line up to make a belt. That's Orion's belt. From there, we can go up and find this orangish red star called Betelgeuse. So if you click on it, you can get all this information on Betelgeuse. You can get what its magnitude is. Now for Betelgeuse, this is not correct. It right now is not 0.45. It is not that bright. Betelgeuse is a pulsating variable star. It's a pulsating supergiant. It is in its death phases. So right now, Betelgeuse is getting ready. As it's getting older, it's running out of fuel. It pulsates. But right now, it's big and puffy, and it's not this bright. It actually isn't as bright as this star. It isn't as bright as any of these stars. It's fairly dim. It's like maybe, I don't even know if it's that bright anymore. But it's really weird. So a lot of amateur astronomers, you and me, and even professional astronomers are watching Betelgeuse and we're comparing its brightness to the stars around it. That might be something cool that you could do as you're waiting for your globe at night project to get started. So he's got two shoulders and then we go down a bright star, Rigel. These are bright stars we're going to be looking for. That's for the constellation of Orion. I always go to his belt. If you go to the right, sorry, the left, you'll run back into Sirius, so you know you're doing the right belt, the correct belt. And if you go to the left, you run into an orange star called Aldebaran, which is the eye of Taurus, the bull here. So this is our winter sky. The really bright stars, those are magnitude one stars. Those are the ones you're gonna be able to see even with your light pollution. If we turn over here to the east, these are meteor showers that are occurring. Now for us, we're probably not gonna see these meteor showers. Um, a lot of times uh, the meteor showers are not visible to the naked eye. They're not some of the cool ones. But high up in the southeast east sky is a constellation called Leo. You know, Try to get this here. Oh, let me back out just a little bit. If you know where your constellation is, Orion, you've been looking for it and finding for it the last couple of months. You go from the belt up through Betelgeuse, which means armpit. So you go up through the armpit. If you keep going, you'll run into a couple more bright stars that kind of make a box. That's the constellation of Gemini, the twins. From there, I just head to the left. The bright star I find is a star called Regulus. That might be the only star you can see in your light polluted skies. It makes the bottom of this question mark path. If I add on my lines, see what it looks to be. It's called a sickle, but it's a backwards question mark. That's the head of Leo the lion. So if you had really good imagination, you might see a lion that looks something like this. And everybody draws their own picture of the lion. So that's Leo the lion. So this is a program called Stellarium, and I'll show you where you can get that. So it's an astronomy software. A lot of professionals and amateurs use it. Comes in all sorts of downloads, Linux, Mac, Windows. Uh, if you don't wanna download the software, you can go straight to the website version too. So it's, it's pretty impressive software. There's lots of things you can do. 
But again, make sure you get your parents' permission before you go and add things to their computer. Um, back to our PowerPoint. So I've got just a couple more slides I want to show you. I know we're hitting the end of our meeting. Let me share those out with you. Another resource you might want to use. This is also coming from the Girl Scout book. I think this was in the junior and senior ambassador was skymaps.com. Every month you can print these out. So, oh, hey, we have April. I'm not used to seeing sky maps available until the first day of the month. So usually you don't get them out till the first day of the month and they publish them. They have a time. So this is evening skies. Here's a cool calendar. So if you're working on observing moon phases or want to know when a planet is easy and, and cool to find. So Venus is conjunction with the Pleiades. This is the first closest in eight years. Lyrid meteor shower. So this is the big one in April. Uh, one of the, actually one of the biggest ones all year, April 22nd, the Lyrid meteor shower. Once you can find Lyra, the constellation of Lyra, you'll be able to see that. Early April is just rising, so it's all night long. It talks a little bit about that. And as an astronomer, it gives you some, on the back side of the map, it gives you some cool things to see with your eye. This is good stuff to practice with. Don't need any equipment. And then seen with a pair of binoculars. Even these cool objects with the eye are awesome to see with binoculars. Now your light pollution will depend on really how much of this list can you see. A lot of the objects that are in the binoculars list, I actually use the telescopes at UNO to see. Because of our light pollution, it's hard to see them with a pair of binoculars. A lot of the objects in the telescope viewing are really hard to find, so I have to use the computer to drive my telescopes in order to find them, and still it ends up being a fuzzy dot. That's another resource. Now, if you like the globe at night and you want to look at other citizen scientist projects, I think this was in the Ambassador Astronomy Badge program. They had the Citizen Science Projects. So if you still like astronomy, they've got different things that you could do. You can help test the satellite tests, search for extrasolar planets, stardust. So you're looking at aerosol gels. When you go into these, they give you directions on how to uh, make observations and how to record data. Backyard world planets. So beyond Neptune, browsing those. Some of those might be a little hard if you don't have a telescope, but go in, see what they're looking for. Most of the time, these research projects are because they have so much pictures and the computer can only analyze so much of the pictures. So they, they need people just to look at pictures and to say, yes, I see it, or no, I don't, or I think it looks like this shape. Searching asteroids. So a group of citizens, citizen scientists, you go in here, and what's gonna happen is they're gonna send you to looking at a whole bunch of pictures. and you're looking for asteroids. So lots of different citizen scientist projects there. As another opportunity, and then there's some news. Zoom Universe is also filled with citizen scientist projects. Those are maybe a little bit higher level. They're not just NASA, but they're research facilities from all over that are looking for people to help. If you translate, they're looking for people to translate different languages. Or in the old times, 
they had people who would write in journals. Maybe some of you already write in a journal. Well, they're looking for people to translate that old time writing into text. That might be an interest of yours. So I want to take the last couple of minutes to share out to see if, if you have any questions or if you have any um, anything you want me to answer. I can I can do that. I have a couple of chats. So Jen, will we make recording available? We joined late, missed some of the conversation content on the apps, etc. Definitely, I will definitely uh, make that recording available. If not on the Girl Scout website, look at uh, the UNO Planetarium website. I'm going to try to. We have a Facebook account, and I'll also try to post it on our Planetarium. If not, you can always send me an email. I'll put that in the chat box too. My email is kteston at unomaha.edu. So I'm at the university um, and I run the planetarium. So I can, I can do questions there. Let me see here. Oh, that just went privately. Let me send that out to everybody. Hey, Krista. Yes, ma'am. Um, if you send, we, you can also post the links in the, if you send me the links that you want, I can share mm -hmm. them in the, um, in the comment section when we post this on Facebook so people can Sounds get good. them from there. So then mm -hmm. after they watch this, they can also um, access those links down below in the com comment section. Wonderful. I'll also, here I can, I'll also show at the end here before I stop the recording, I can also show you um, those slides again and where I took them out. Do that as we're talking. Anyone wants, they can raise their hand. I don't know if Renee, if we want to unmute microphones. Yeah, if they have questions. Um, I did want to quick mention, because I have to get in another call, um, okay. but tomorrow at 10 a.m., I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live and talking about global Girl Scouting. So um, you guys can tune into that and learn a little bit more about that. And um, we want you to use your flat Juliet. And I think Crystal, um, you have a, yeah, use your flat yeah. Juliet and you can use hashtag Girl Scouts at home, spelled out A-T, and then also hashtag GSSN. That's right. I'm new to this social media stuff. So um, yeah. I got to remember those hashtags myself because we have one for the planetarium, but I got to remember it myself. So I did mention that you could do your app. So there's my little Juliet. When you do Globe at Night, um, the app is actually called Losing the Night. Oh, it, it looks like a little purple owl. And it sends you in and you could set up your phone to do, to do that. Let me show you some of the, the other links. Someone also messaged about the astronomy club. And even though you're not quite old enough necessarily to do the astronomy, oh, I forgot to share it out again. Let me hit my share button, share my screen. So even if you're not quite old enough to be an official NEBO member, um, it is set up for fourth grade and above. You can join us at our Zoom webinar. We're going to meet this, year, this month or April, um, and we're going to talk about the history of space exploration. We're going to do some um, current, what's currently happening on missions. I'll jump on to Stellarium. We'll talk about the night sky. So we are doing a Nebo Zoom webinar, and that'll be open to all Girl Scouts. So I use Stellarium. 
So this was the open floor questions we're asking. Resource list. So even if you're not that older Girl Scout member, you can still use and start earning some of your astronomy or space science badges. So we're making star patterns. Using that Stellarium, you can look at different culture star patterns. So what, what I've been talking about as Orion the Mighty Hunter for the Sioux Nation is an animal. Uh, brownies do something similar. That Stellarium and also the Globe at Night website does tell some of the stories of those constellations. And then scavenger hunts. Can you find these objects? Don't just stop at stars constellations. Can you find the moon? What phase is the moon in? Can you find certain planets? Did you see a shooting star, a meteor? How about a satellite? We did the star wheel. That was what we started off with. And that here's the Girl Scout version of the website. But I just typed in how to make a star wheel. You come up with a sky and telescope, which is where this link leads you to. Astrophotography, if you're using your smartphone already to do a uh, globe at night, start taking pictures. Become an astrophotographer. In the cadet booklet, pamphlet, it actually talks about how to do some settings to be a better astrophotographer. There's lots of websites, web links, um, lots of articles out there on how to start taking photos. It's not as easy as you may think. Sky maps, I showed you that, but there's a Girl Scout web link. If you go to skymaps.com, you come up to the site I showed you for printable sky map. And this is the Globe at Night project that was actually specifically listed as cadets, seniors. Okay, go on your scavenger hunt with your sky map, sharing what your, your knowledge. Part of that was practicing your astrophotography. So taking a picture, maybe you're taking a picture with Flat Juliet looking up at the moon or something. Um, and then as you get into the ambassadors, not only do we have the Globe at Night project, but there is other citizen science projects available to you. Anyone else have something they want to share? I'll probably stop our recording right now in case anyone wants to ask questions outside of our recorded video.